everyone uh, to our second cluster talk kind of today. Uh, so please welcome with me, Javi. Yeah. Good morning, people. Uh, so I'm going to talk about the evolution of geo-replication in GlusterFS. And uh, to start with it, I'll give a brief idea about what Gluster is so that you can understand the rest of the talk. And yeah, Gluster is a distributed file system with uh, no single point of failure. We don't have a metadata server, and that's how we achieve this no single point of failure. And uh, it provides easy scaling out. And it can run on any commodity hardware. You don't have to buy boxes to run Gluster. And it provides other basic file system features like replication, erasure coding, and stuff. And the terminologies that you have to know with Gluster are bricks. Bricks are basically your disks, which you are going to have, going to make use to store your data in the backend. And uh, servers, servers are going to be collection of your bricks. And uh, a volume, volume is a logical entity which is going to have a collection of bricks across various servers. And then your client, that's where you write your data, and that di data is going to be transferred on to your bricks. And the trusted storage pool. It's a collection of servers within which you can perform certain operations and manage it. So the overview would be something like this. So you have bricks in your server. And these bricks together form a logical entity called a volume. And that volume is mounted on a client where you are going to consume it. So yeah, how about geo-replication? Uh, the basic requirement for geo-replication is uh, disaster recovery. With replication, your data is going to be on your site, the same data center, and uh, that's uh, not that much reliable when it comes to natural calamity. So we go for uh, geo-replication where you can replicate your data across different data centers. And uh, yeah, the requirements for geo-replication are how do we get the copy of data from one cluster volume or yeah, one cluster volume to the other place? So to do that, we came up, uh, and also the other requirements where checkpoints to know until when your data is actually uh, replicated from the master side to the slave side. And the last process is to make this uh, copying as efficient as possible to reduce the hit on the IOs that are happening on the master volume. And how we did it is basically we have two volumes. Uh, the master volume where you are actually writing your data. From the master volume, the data is copied on to your slave. So we, uh, we basically created two volumes and made use of them. And uh, the other thing is you have to record the changes that are going in on your master site. And then these recorded changes will be transferred from the master site to the slave site. And to record the changes is where we came up with something called change log. Uh, so change log is basically a translator. A translator in Gluster means something which gets a certain input and provides a certain output. So changelog is going to get the data uh, that are written on a particular volume as a recorded change. And this change is later on going to be um, sent for the geo-replication to replicate it to the other side. And it's on the brick side. I'll explain how this uh, flow goes. And yeah, once you have the change logs, the change logs have to be synced from the master side to the slave side. And the other benefits of changelog would be to uh, create checkpoints. Like if you have uh, 10 writes which are made, and uh, each write is into a changelog, then you can say that if you have completed five change uh, changelogs, then five of your writes are done. This is how we came up with the checkpoints. And also, if a particular write is uh, failing for some reason, being a changelog, you can just retry that particular write alone and then uh, succeed. So this reduces the overhead of doing the whole operation again. Yeah, so as you can see, you have the master volume, which is one particular cluster volume in some trusted storage pool. And the content from the master volume will be synced across to your slave volume. This is how basically geo-replication works as of today. Yeah, so we have three types of crawl. So the reason for crawl is uh, change logs get recorded. Oh, so if you see this, you will understand. So that's one brick which I have explained um, with a change log. So change log, your IOs will be coming from the top, and it goes until the bottom where you are. Uh, you have your disk there, which is going to store your data. So when it goes through the brick, it's going to pass through the change log, and change log is, to, is going to know that okay, now I'm getting a write operation. So such an operation is later on then returned to a flat file. And it just keeps create, uh, writing the contents to a flat file based on the incoming content. So yeah, the rest I'll come back in a few minutes. 
So these content will be available only if the geo replication was uh, was uh, enabled when you create the volume. But there can be cases where you already have a volume and you want to sync the contents across to another volume. So here you won't have your change logs. So that's the reason we have this hybrid crawl. So what this hybrid crawl does is, once you enable GeoRep on an existing master volume, this uh, uh, crawl is going to go through your file system, create pseudo change logs, and these change logs will be later on used to uh, sync to the slave volume. And change log crawl is incoming traffic, it records the change log, and it uh, syncs up to the slave volume. History is when you have a number of change logs recorded, but GeoRip was stopped for some reason, and now you again started because the slave volume is back up. So all your recorded history will be uh, synced there. And how we do this is where this diagram comes into the picture. You have the change log translator in the brick, which records the changes to the flat file. And then the agent process is going to read the contents from the flat file and give it to this worker. And worker is going to read the contents from the master and write it onto the slave. And the worker and the agent are taken care by the monitor. So if one dies, uh, the monitor spawns it again and so on. Yeah, so the disadvantages with the current approach is, so we, call, uh, we have something called a GFID to identify a particular file in uh, uh, Gluster. It's going to be unique, and uh, so far we have, uh, so this GFID is used to construct the whole file system. So we are replicating the GFIDs from the master to the slave as well to construct this whole tree. And this one dependency has been giving a number of issues like uh, um, you can't replicate it to a non-cluster volume. You can uh, you can have GFID conflicts between master and slave, and all those problems can be there. And you can't manually copy a file from the master to the slave. Right now, it has to be done to a cluster volume through the GeoRep. So, uh, and other than that, if you have a create, delete, and a create, you have to repeat all these processes one after the other to have it in the right state. So. To basically avoid these issues, we came up with something called uh, as path-based geo-replication, and we are um, working on it. So what this does is uh, it stores your parent GFID in each file's uh, exata. This way, we have a separate tool which can read this particular exata and then um, understand how the path is, give the path to the slave volume so that the slave volume can work on the paths instead of working on the GFID. This way we have removed the GFID dependency, so the advantage is that you don't need a cluster volume for the slave volume. You can write it to any of your other type of storage where you want to write it. And uh, yeah, you can use additional tools to do the initial sync. You can copy files manually from the master to the slave, and you don't have to do a create, delete, and create. We use rsync, which just does it with a single create. Yeah, these are the advantages of path-based geo-replication, and I have a demo just to show how uh, to have geo replication between two volumes in cluster. So basically, I'm doing a peer prop to create the trusted storage pool I'm talking about. So if you see, I'm having a two, uh, two servers, and I'm creating a volume between two servers called as the master volume. And I'm starting it. Oops. Sorry. Yeah. So I'm starting the master volume. now. Uh, this is additional step for geo-replication, which is used by geo-replication internally. This is another volume. So similar to this, I would have created a slave volume on another machine so that I can uh, do the geo-rep between these two. So the master volume is here on these uh, trusted storage pool, and the slave volume is on a different storage trusted storage pool, which you will have to repeat the same process. And I'm starting this particular volume which Europe uses. So, yeah, after that, I'm mounting the master volume and this additional volume that Europe is going to make use of. Uh, yeah, so this is another command which you can make use uh, instead of creating this particular volume. This command takes care of that work, but as I have done this, uh, per created this particular volume manually, uh, this command is failing. But this is something that you can note to reduce this uh, work. And then you can see that, uh, so this command is going to, so you will need a passwordless SSH between your master and slave cluster volume, one of the nodes. So I have done that. This is going to get the keys from, SSH keys from various nodes in the master volume, and then send it to the slave volume so that the transfer can actually happen through SSH. 
So I'm doing that and uh, other configurations for geo replication. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Uh, so you see that I'm doing certain configurations for geo replication and then I'm starting a geo replication session over here and then uh, I'm checking the status. It initializes and at one point it actually uh, starts to work. So now I'll SSH to the slave node and show you the mount in the slave node to see what is the data available there. We haven't wrote any data, so it should be empty there. So you can see, oh, one minute. Oops. Yeah, so on the master, when I do an LS, you see nothing because I haven't created any file here. Now I am SSHing into the slave. One minute. And uh, yeah, you can see the slave volume here, uh, which is a different volume from the master volume. And I'm doing an LS on the slave, it's again empty. I'm coming back to the master cluster and I'm creating certain files here. And now you can see the files in the master volume. I'm going back to the slave volume and I, again I'm doing an LS on the slave. So which was empty, now it has these five, uh, 10 files replicated here. So. Setting up geo replication should be fairly easy in cluster. This is how you do it. If you have any questions, yeah. Okay. Questions. Um, so um, you said that um, you implemented path path-based uh, geo replication that doesn't use the GFIDs. So is it possible to use both to use either so, path-based uh, or with GFIDs? It is not a done. It's a work in progress okay. thing. Right okay. now you have the normal geo replication, which is between a cluster volume to another cluster volume. Okay. So, so path-based geo replication is something we are still working on. It's not yet completed. So the whole asing thing is. So not, uh, um, once we complete it we will be mostly relying on path-based geo-replication rather than ha supporting the old one. So currently geo-replication always has to be done um, to a target that's also a cluster volume? Yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Any more questions? Um, um, the um, the the uh, the changelog translator um, does it have a performance impact uh, if if it's enabled and co could it be used for other purposes? Because for example, we kind of want to track all file operations, kind of like, kind of like an audit log, something like that. So, can the changelog translator used be used for that purpose, and does it have a performance impact? So the question is, does the changelog uh, translator have a performance hit and uh, can it be used for auditing as well? And uh, yes, changelog will have a minimal impact and we do give you options to set the uh, changelog. Like uh, you can say that I'll record a file for every 15 seconds, for every 15 minutes. So you have the ability to configure the time based on your volume. So that is something which how uh, with which you can tune your volume and uh, we do have, we, we are using changelog for it another uh, tool called Glusterfine which is going to give you the files which have been changed from certain checkpoint to another checkpoint. So again their changelogs are handy so you can make use of changelogs for auditing as well. So are the cha are these change logs like complete? Like, can you trust that every file operation will appear in the change log? Yes, change log has been. Uh, so, can you trust change log? Is the question. And change log has been there in Gluster for a while now, and it's pretty stable. So, yeah, change logs are uh, trustworthy. Yeah. What can you advise for active active replication? Now Sorry, it's like, I. Uh, um, master slave, right? Okay. Is it, is it possible to create like uh, two sides master? 
Sorry, uh, is it possible yeah, to create? Mean, like for heavy ability. Now it's for disaster recovery. Okay. Right? So oh, you're asking if it is possible to get it back the other way. Exactly. Like, uh, yes. So the question is, uh, is it only from master to slave or is slave to master also possible? Yeah, right now, uh, once you stop your geo-replication session from master to slave, you can enable it the other way as well. This way you can copy your data back, but we don't have active active mechanism right now. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so this seems to be the case, and thank you, Hari. Thank you. So, Pathway Jira application is worked by Arvinda. And uh, yeah, the Jira application team in Red Hat comprises of us. If you have any questions, I have the links provided in the slides. You can make use of it. Thank you.